What's up peeps, this is Todd and welcome back to my show. So today I wanted to put out a slightly different video because a lot of my content is about budgeting, it's about making smart financial decisions, investing, real estate, and all that good stuff. But of course, at some point, what is the point of amassing wealth if you're not going to enjoy your money? So for today's video, what I wanted to talk to everybody about is how to responsibly enjoy your money. If that sounds good, let's hop into the video. Now, before I get too far into the video, I do wanna put a quick disclaimer out. Everything that I'm talking to you guys about is what works for me. I will never declare that my way is the only way or even that my way is the right way. What I'm saying is that my way is the right way for me and if you guys see value in it too, then of course, cherry pick whatever you like from my strategy and use it for your own. In fact, I'm a big fan of doing that. Um, I, I listen to Dave Ramsey. I don't agree with everything he says, particularly when it comes to credit cards and using leverage to buy real estate. But I do like his principles of not having any bad debt and saving a nest egg. On the flip side, I also take advice from Robert Kiyosaki and Grant Cardone who have completely different opinions than Dave Ramsey. So what I do is I just pick and choose everything that I like about all of the influencers that I admire, and I just take the best traits of what I think will work for me. So feel free to do that with any of my content. In my opinion, here is the absolute best way to responsibly enjoy your money. And that is very simple, buy the asset first. I'll give you an example to illustrate what I mean by that. At some point in the near future, my wife and I are probably going to be starting a family. And so a couple years ago when we were talking about that, I thought that we would need a pretty decent family car. So at the time I was looking at an SUV. Now before any of my left wing friends freak out and think I'm going to destroy the planet by getting a gas guzzling SUV, I was looking at an electric SUV, but for the purpose of this video, we're just going to gloss over those details. Essentially, the vehicle that I was looking at cost $65,000. And at the time that I was considering that vehicle, I had $65,000 in cash that I could go pay for that vehicle. Now buying that car would have been fun, it would have been exciting, and it would technically be enjoying my money because it would have been a purchase that you know, it's, it's for the family, but it would also have been for me. But I use a strategy called buying the asset first. And basically what I did was that $65,000 car, and again, I had the cash to pay for that. I instead, I took that $65,000 and I put a down payment on a rental property. Now I did house hack this rental property, which basically means you rent it out by the bedroom instead of the entire house. It's a lot more lucrative that way. And yes, you have multiple people living in one house, but in the area that I bought it in, you can have two people per bedroom plus one. So just for example, if you have a six bedroom house, you can have two people per bedroom for a total of 12 plus one for a total of 13. Rest assured, I do not have 13 people living in that house. We just have one person per bedroom. But at this particular house, the down payment that I needed to come up with was $65,000 which was the same price of that luxury SUV that I was considering purchasing. Now the crazy thing is off of this $65,000 down payment, I collect about $7,800 in rent just from that one property. And after the mortgage, taxes, insurance, maintenance, and utilities are all paid for, what I end up walking away with, what I end up profiting, is about $4,000 per month just on that one house hack. Now here's where it gets really interesting. That luxury vehicle that I liked, that one that cost $65,000, if I were to finance that over just over five years, that car would be $1,000 per month. And I say that because I can get interest-free financing with my credit. And this will be a topic for another video, you guys, but let me just say one thing. Um, rich people, by and large, do not pay interest. Um, we, we can get cars at 0%. Don't pay bank fees either. I'm gonna make a video about how expensive it is to actually be poor. Because poor people and middle class people, if they do get a loan, they end up paying interest for that car and they can get overdraft fees and you know bank monthly service fees. Rich people don't pay any of that. That's a topic for another video. But based on my credit, I could finance that car. And after negotiating, I got that car down from $65,000 to $60,000. Financed over five years would be $1,000 per month. No interest would be paid. Now remember, I took that $65,000 and I put it on a down payment on the rental property. And after all of the expenses are paid, that house produces $4,000 per month. What that means to me 
is that house, that $65,000, is now paying me $4,000 per month in free and clear cash flow. Meaning I can go finance that luxury SUV for a thousand bucks a month and have $3,000 left over. Or I could buy a whole fleet of luxury SUVs because it's paying me 4,000 bucks a month. I could buy four of those SUVs and have my house completely make the payments on each car. Now fast forward to today, um, I still have that rental house. It's doing great for me. I didn't even end up buying the luxury SUV. I figured I didn't want it and we don't have a family yet, so it would have been premature to purchase it. But this is a really great example of how buying the asset first allows you to get everything you want, but it also makes you money. And I use this strategy not just for vehicles, but in pretty much everything I do. So if I wanna go on vacation, like my, my wife and I are planning a five week trip to Europe, and what we're thinking we're going to spend is between 20 and $30,000 for that trip to Europe. And the reason why is we're going to be staying in really nice hotels. We're not going to be staying in hostels. We're going to be staying in you know, five-star resorts or five-star hotels. And in addition to seeing France, Italy, and Spain, we then want to take a river tour up to Ireland and then go see that area. And just those river tours are pretty bougie. They can be anywhere from 15 to 20 grand. But the important thing is I'm not going to take $30,000 and just go to Europe. I'm going to take $30,000 and invest it in a way that that Europe trip can get paid for for me. I'm gonna buy the asset first that will pay for the liability. And just for the purpose of definitions, anytime I talk about assets, I don't necessarily mean something that you own. I mean something that puts money in your pocket, something that pays you. And anytime I talk about liabilities, I'm talking about things that cost you, things that take money away from your pocket. So whether it's a trip to Europe, or a new purse for my wife, or a new leather jacket for myself, or a luxury SUV, whatever it is, I never actually use my active income, the money that I work for, to go buy that thing that I want. I use my active income to invest in an asset. And the money that the asset produce, that's what I use to go have my fun. And that, you guys, is exactly how the rich properly and effectively buy the things that they want, is they buy the asset that pays for the toy. I hope this video was helpful to you. If you like this content, make sure to smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. And also do not forget to subscribe. If you want to follow me on TikTok, my handle is at Todd J Baldwin. It is the exact same handle for my Instagram, which is right down below. And hopefully I will see you guys on those platforms as well. But I hope you enjoy this content. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.